Hello and welcome to my easy to understand guide to the music video Turntables by Janelle Manai. This video is going to be particularly relevant for you if you are studying Educast A-Level Media Studies as it appears on the specification for study for exams from 2024 onwards. This video is going to focus particularly on media language and representation. Before I start, it's important to note that Janelle Manai is a non-binary singer. Um, they actually use a variety of pronouns. She uses both she, her, and also they, them, and is happy with either of those pronouns. So it's likely that in this video, I'm gonna use a little bit of a mix of both, but it means that it depends on what resources you see, may refer to the artist in a lot of different ways, and uh, either she, her, or they, them is fine. The music video opens actually with um, an archive audio clip um, which is I Can't Be a Pessimist and this is an audio clip uh, by a man called James Baldwin from 1968. Um, it, this kind of uh, old audio clip may suggest that this issue is a long-term one, that whatever she's going to be singing about, whatever the message is of this music video, it's something that has been ongoing for a long period of time. The costume that Janelle Monae is wearing at the beginning here seems kind of quite old fashioned, perhaps like 1940s, and perhaps seems like a kind of American military style uh, uniform. So perhaps like an army overcoat and hat. Um, so perhaps linking the singer to um, the American military, to kind of patriotism and nationalism, and um, perhaps suggesting again that this issue has been ongoing for a long period of time. The overcoat, the hat, the suitcase that she's carrying gives her a certain amount of power and dominance within the image. It makes her seem quite important. We then cut to some shots of a young black girl wearing what appears to be uh, quite unusual hair and a virtual reality headset. And that makes this feel quite futuristic. The use of the kind of quite blue colour palette here adds to that feeling that this may be in the future and that she is watching these scenes of Janelle Manai on the television as though this is some kind of past event that she can experience through virtual reality. And you can interpret this a number of ways, but some people think that this may be interpreted as, you know, this idea of racism and, and protesting is something of the past. And that in this alternative future, this version of the future that we're seeing with this young girl, that these are things that she can only experience and learn about through virtual reality rather than through her everyday life. So this is something that in this kind of uh, version of the future, uh, they seem to have like abolished racism and discrimination. It creates a kind of positive um, future just from the outset. It kind of suggests that things can be better and that they will be better. We do get this binary opposition between this kind of very new technology and the old vinyl record as well. So creating this old versus new opposition and this idea that now what we're seeing is old to the little girl, uh, but perhaps more present day for us as an audience. And this is when we're seeing um, very, very old archive black and white footage um, montage together showing extracts from various historical events, you know, civil rights, fights, protests, marches, etc. Adds to this feeling of realism for the audience because it really does show um, very real events that happened in things like the 1940s, 50s and 60s. We see the singer stood in front of the American flag and again this adds to this theme of nationalism and the country being something that she's going to be singing about. These archive shots of black history are intercut um, with the scenes of the black family in the future having breakfast together and it's these kind of cross-cutting back and forth between these two time periods which adds this contrast as to the awful things that black people had to suffer through in the 1940s, 50s and 60s, the discrimination, the protests, the riots, um, the harassment, contrasting with the positive community and, and tight-knit family that this girl has in the future. The lyrics say, I keep my hands dirty and my mind clean. So perhaps representing the singer as being kind of quite working class, down to earth, you know, she's getting her hands dirty, she's getting involved, she is actively protesting and working to change things. Lots of shots of huge numbers of crowds within the music video, which again emphasises the sheer number of people that this particular issue impacts. 
the images of police in riot gear and people confronting these police officers is very reflective of the rise in the Black Lives Matter movement within the last few years in particular um, and is going to be very familiar to a lot of audiences who will have seen uh, protests, riots and marches like this in the news. And this clearly is reflecting the idea that there's not just inequality within politics, but also within the criminal justice system, where there has been a lot of evidence of police brutality and violence against black communities. We see a montage of shots here of people with their fists in the air, which is a very iconic um, symbol for black power from the past. And this helps again to create a very powerful representation of the black community. This helps to really anchor the meaning that this is an actual fight, that there is a fight to be had in order to get equality in both in terms of gender and ethnicity. The themes of um, nationalistic issues are um, added to here when uh, Janelle sings, America, you are a lie, and we see statues toppling over. It's um, very anti-American. It's very much connoting this idea that there are innate integral problems within America and its um, infrastructure and the way the country is run. And this is immediately tied to the images of the voting, lots of images of people casting their votes in various elections. And so perhaps suggesting that politics is one of the main problems that, that they want to draw attention to in this video. With the chorus, when Janelle Monet sings, the tables are about to turn, the actual camera shot starts to kind of rotate. So it becomes a very canted angle and actually kind of goes quite far around. And these canted uh, angles or Dutch tilts, as some people call them, um, are very much about suggesting that things are about to turn. Literally, it's about chaos. It's about disruption. And we get lots of positive montages here, people smiling, laughing, dancing, marching together, being part of a community. We see pride flags encouraging people to take pride in their own backgrounds and communities. As well as voting, the music video also alludes to other issues. So I am going to swear here, but I am quoting the music video lyrics. She actually sings, you fuck up the kitchen, you should do the dishes. Um, it's this idea that if you ruin the world, you should be the one that fixes it. Um, and so perhaps um, really kind of making a political comment about things like climate change um, and the environment and the generations that have ruined that for the rest of the world and how they should be taking more responsibility for fixing these issues that they have caused. There's a deliberate choice within the music video to include a wide variety of people from different backgrounds. You see people with Afro hair, you see people with braided hair, you see people with disabilities, people from different ethnic backgrounds and cultures. So it's about diversity and inclusion. And a lot of these people are often underrepresented in media products. So um, her choice to include these people within the video perhaps reflects her own cultural identity and her own feeling that more inclusivity is necessary. There are also references here to how there is inequality within things like the toy industry, where a little girl looks between a white doll and a black doll and seems really pleased to have found a doll that looks like her. And this reflects the fact that actually in the toy industry, there is very little diversity in terms of ethnicity. Within the video, there are several images, archive images of real politicians uh, such as Stacey Abrams and Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. And this suggests that perhaps Monet is um, particularly pro-Democrat in her political ideologies. We see a kind of metaphorical struggle going on here with um, the dragging of the statue out of the sea. It's a very difficult physical struggle, which perhaps represents the kind of mental, emotional difficulties and struggles that people are having and have had and, and will continue to have for a long time. The images of children are interesting. We see the child here with the umbrella and the sparks falling down and the umbrella protecting her. This idea that the world is a dangerous place and that actually we need to be protecting children and, and protecting the next generation. It's important to understand the context of the music video, uh, why it was written, why it was released, because that helps to explain some of the choices of media language and representation. The music video was actually written as a song for an Amazon documentary called All In, The Fight for Democracy about voter suppression. Um, and this particularly was a documentary that focused on the suppression of black voters 
uh, within American elections. Um, this was a big issue and, and still is in uh, current elections that have been happening more recently, where in particular in southern American states, um, a number of um, black people were unable to cast votes or their votes were kind of lost. Um, and we're not just talking one or two, we're talking um, it affected nearly two million minority voters, which will have had a real impact on the, the voting and the actual results. It meant that in certain southern states, um, white Republicans were elected and uh, black Democratic candidates did not get in because of these votes from minority citizens being lost or erased perhaps suggests why she's uh, very vocal in the video about people you know making changes and going out and trying to vote and fighting for their rights to vote um, because this is obviously a very real issue that affects a number of real people particularly in America but also in other countries. The beach with the wave sounds it feels very natural towards the end it adds this idea of, of hope and peace and freedom. There's lots of close-ups and direct address in the music video, which is very conventional, also helps to represent the singer as being very powerful. A lot of audiences are going to see this video and feel very empowered. They're going to feel represented, whereas other music videos don't often include them. Making a video like this can be quite controversial for an artist because it's very clearly showing um, Janelle Monáe's political stance. And um, a lot of singers avoid doing this because they want to represent themselves as being fairly politically neutral in order to appeal to the widest possible audience. So actually making a video like this very clearly narrows down Janelle Monáe's audience to a kind of more Democrat, liberal audience. Um, and in particular, um, people from minority backgrounds, whether that is in terms of race or sexuality or gender. And so this is quite a risky music video, but it just goes to show how um, uh, passionately this artist feels about these issues, that they're willing to take these risks to communicate these messages. Some audiences are going to be put off by the political issues. There are some very conservative audiences, particularly those who are Republican and in southern states of America where these issues happened, um, who feel that th these, these aren't issues or who have been convinced that these were um, fake news. Um, and so some issues, some audiences may be um, alienated by these representations. And some audiences are also going to be put off by the kind of anti-American ideologies within the video. They may suggest that uh, this feels like it is very unpatriotic and uh, is very anti-American representations. With Janelle Monáe herself being non-binary, um, she's a black, she also considers herself uh, pansexual slash bisexual. Uh, they've mentioned both within interviews. Um, it may suggest why this particular artist is very passionate about inclusivity and diversity, um, both within their politics and also within their music video. So that was my very easy to understand guide to the music video turntables. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel for other videos that are gonna be relevant for you. Uh, and if you've got any questions, just leave a little comment below and I'll see what I can do.